All right, everybody, we're back again with the mob, the mafia, and the man. It's another week you guys are going to like this show. And I got a special guest with me behind me. It's my new bodyguard. I'm sick of getting beat up these days. So <laughs> I got Danny with me. Just try him. Just try him. John Jr., take the, take the boxing match. <laughs> so here we go this week. So listen, did I change my life? Yes, I did. And I'm going to bring somebody in that you guys are going to really love. And this is my friend Fred Taylor and his son, Freddie. And these guys are, got a story for you guys are going to love it. Hit the subscribe button. Hit the comments. Write me. Tell me what you want. Tell me your menus. And you're going to be really, you're going to really enjoy this this week, everybody. Take it away, guys. I my, feel like I'm on the five. On, on the, on the, the on, five. You see, the here's five? the first problem. This Let is like end. the five. No, it's six of us first off. So you already screwed that up. Yeah. Well, he's a bodyguard. He I got do, his new bat. Does the muscle count? Does the muscle count? Yeah, the muscle Kevin, really count it is a bad boy. day. Try Kevin, go ahead. Introduce really, me. Really, Kevin, introduce me. I'll introduce it you. It is a really bad and day when Freddy's... I'm a calm one, calm one in this room. I'm Kevin Donaldson, and of course, the effervescent Michael Dowd. And my guests, here. Freddie and Fred. Yes. See, that was nice and calm. Now, what do they do? We're going to bring down the energy, guys. You're here because you were on Junior J Gordon Ramsay's yeah, Junior Chef. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Which is pretty cool because you know he's looked at a type of guy that is pretty cool. That uh, is very, very brash. Very, um, he, he demeans people from time to time. Uh, first thing I want to know, because this has been killing me, I'm pretty sure that's just a persona. He is a persona. I think he's hilarious, personally. Like, we see him yell at people and whatnot. But uh, he's a chill guy. I like him. Yeah. Is he, he, was he, he was he generous to you? Is he nice to you? Yeah, he was nice to me. Did he give you any good tips? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, if you watch the show, he got helped out a couple times. Oh, really? Yeah, well, I like him. He's a cool guy. Yeah, that's nice. That's nice. So, why don't you tell everybody how you got into cooking? Uh, I was about, I would say, third grade when I first started cooking because he would take, like, forever to make dinner after we got home. So, I was like, yeah, I'll just cook. And he's someone with uh, So, I made dinner and then. Um, Who's that? Your dad? He, yeah, my he? dad. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, do you cook for him now, breakfast? Uh, breakfast? Actually, no, that's his job. That's the, that's the one thing he does. Oh. Okay. I don't, I don't I like to you can flip an egg. All right. That's yeah, good. You can flip an egg. Yeah. And uh, <laughs> not everybody can. And so my grandmother taught me how to cook a lot. We were in a restaurant supply business, so I was in like the kitchen, hanging out with the chefs, and all that. And they would like, you know, give me like tips here and there, and you watch them. And my grandmother, um, she helped me in uh, learning how to cook a lot. I would say. Oh. And then uh, Chef Beth, uh, that's when like we was like we were like about to like get ready to like actually to, like, try out for the show. She um like I was at her house every day after school making uh, veal. And like I tuna and steak and all that, and that's how that went on the show. So, do you decide on what menu you want to cook before you cook when you get on the show, or you know, or do they tell you what to cook when you're up there? Uh, I tell you what to cook when you're up there. So, if you had to handle some ex-convicts, by the way, do you know who that is right next? Oh, to this is uh, the the fine <laughs> my, my... expert criminal. Who decided he was gonna start working for drug dealers? This guy as a cop and not pick okay, up his who paycheck. Who let this guy in? <laughs> and who parked let... his brand new Corvette <laughs> that, according to the IRS, he can't afford in the police captain spot. He knows this more about me than, than I do. Criminal I've ever seen. I don't know. I, 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 I did a better job than you. <laughs> no wonder why Gordon Ramsay and him got along. Two, two freaking jewels. My All God. Oh my God. Is what they are. But that's 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 pretty pretty interesting. You followed. The Mike Dowd, because yeah. he, he is. But what you're going to find out, and what you're going to find out as you grow, is Mike was you and me are like the Mike same. was he, <laughs> self admittedly the, the the most corrupt cop in New York City. What, what did you call it? You, you didn't call corrupt. You didn't call it corrupt. You rogue. Called, huh? Rogue. 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 That's the rogue. word. I, I was a little rogue. Great way to put it. Standing to my left is was a true blue gangster. Rogue. R rogue gang. No, he wasn't a rogue gangster. He was gangster. rogue. He was rogue. He didn't listen to anybody. Yeah, actually, actually, Ronnie Wanong was the captain in the Gambino family. When he did his opening statement, he called me a loose cannon and a rogue. So, you know, so there you go. And so it's on public record. So it's, been yeah, yeah, it's, been yeah, yeah, so it's verified. Yeah. So <laughs> You got a blue check mark. Yeah, yeah. Rogue. I was a police officer, and I was a very straight-laced police officer. But what you're going to find out real quickly is... The, the three of us, there's more that brings us together than tears us apart because we do have a lot of common interests. And I'm pretty sure, like, everybody loves what you're doing on the show and everybody loves food, so I'm pretty sure that you're going to be part of this family. So you were a gangster or something or not? No. 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 Oh, just, just these guys? Just these guys. You're a junior chef, and now you're a junior... What's the title we got to give him? Because he's wearing my sunglasses, yeah. the new ones that just came uh, out. He's a junior... He's a good Samaritan. 
Okay. Good, no, he's, he's talking about the the, good the, the John, uh, upstanding members aside. There you, you go. Know. The John oh, Elite limited right. edition right. by right. Private Eyewear. Okay, now it's available on JohnElite.com. He's got the eyewear, which we're all wearing right now. Yes, most absolutely. Of us, most of us, anyway. Yeah, let's got them. Dad, fashion, fashion them so we can see them. Just really. I'll, the I'll let you know. I've been wearing these all day. They're a little dark for you, but they're nice. They they're look good. nice. All Actually, day. Actually, they're squared up. They look good. And my eyes feel pretty good. We yeah, got to get I'm another good. pair for, for Dan. Yeah. Danny, we got to get you a pair. What's the name um, of them? The boss over here. What's the name of these glasses? They're the John Elite Limited Edition by Private Eye. Private so Eye. you can I'm go on JohnElite.com and find it. Shouldn't you know? Well, I just was introduced to them today, and they're not my, uh, they're not mine, they're John's, but they will be mine shortly. And if you keep this up, they'll be yours too. All right. <laughs> Can I ask you a question? What, what, was there a certain dish that made you get into cooking? Like, was there something that really, like, you're like, this is the thing that made you get started? In no, cooking? I was just hungry. <laughs> so, so I have a, I have, you know, I have a lot of questions. So, and I'm gonna, they, they're gonna dig down a little bit. So, and if you're uncomfortable, just say, you know. Yeah. So, what, what made you be the one that had to cook? Mom was not there. You don't have, I don't, you know. So, if you don't want to get into it, that's fine. But I want to know because people are gonna want. I guess they're gonna ask us if you don't answer. Oh yeah, ask yeah, uh, My dad, um, he's like a single dad, right? So we were at home, and he was like tired, wanted to watch a game, and I was hungry. All right. All right. So. He's like, 30 more minutes, 30 more minutes. So I'm like, you know what? Yo, I was cooking. 30 come on, more come minutes. Right so I, um. Well, what were you cooking at the time? I think it was filet mignon, actually. You know, we was eating oh, good. Damn. Damn. Really? Dad. Yeah, Dad, I'm gonna, I want to sit on his couch, man. Yeah. The, and for the people that want to know what we're doing standing, we're going in and out of the kitchen because he cooked for us earlier yeah, today. Yeah, what a guy. What, a, what so, was that meal? So, 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 calamari? What was it? There's all um, sorts of stuff. That's yeah, just one dish. Stuff. That's the one dish he makes. There's there's yeah. some veal. There's a little bit of steak. There's, there's, there's we got everything. Uh, we got T-bone. Um, oh, nice. oh, tuna tuna tata. I heard tuna tata is one of his dishes. That's not bad. No, nah, it's called ahi tuna. tuna. What's it called? Ahi tuna. Oh, ahi tuna. You take it. You take it and uh, take it on, and you uh, sear it for like. So you take that white line on the bottom of the tuna and you flip it. Oh, right, right. Dip it in like uh, soy sauce. Soy sauce, you know, black pepper, no, or just no, 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 no black pepper. The salt and sesame seeds. Ooh, nice. So you're nice. in the middle of, uh, the show is airing right now, which it's not filmed right now, though. You've already filmed it. Yeah, filmed it a while ago. Yeah. Okay, so what episode are they at right now, currently? We're on uh, three. You're on three. So um, there's some gamblers in this room, and we'd like to know who won. So how about, so? this won't air. It'll be over by the time it's done, so let's just give us some inside information. You see, uh, on camera, I'm not about to commit a crime uh, while filming a podcast. I don't know. With a bunch of criminals. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> So you're holding that tight lip so no matter what. So you have an NDA. You know, you know, you, you want to give me an envelope after. You know? Yeah, yeah. We can talk there you go. <laughs> right. Did they this really? Would, already... You obviously had to sign an NDA, but what is what is the what is the penalties? Uh, well, loss of his funds. Two hundred fifty thousand per episode not aired. Yes, yeah, so I better okay. be a big envelope. And guys. and and we, I mean, <laughs> you need a big envelope. As far as me filling out paperwork, I mean, to the ceiling. So and every single time they did let you know that if you did let something out, they will ruin your life. Wow! Wow! Yeah, I can't wait. You, you, I mean, well, you're killing the you're killing the show. Of course. All right, so we'll save that for off camera. All right. Don't worry yeah, about no, it. No, no, that's it. No, so we, big bets we are in place. Don't know. We never put you in that position. Well, no, well, never. Well, yeah. Who's the draft king guy here? So you know. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah. Oh, it's not you. Yeah, yeah. We'll with you, John. How, how do you yeah. know it wasn't him? This guy. He doesn't know who I know. That's. I hope it's a better under his own name after getting them filmed. That's what he would do. Wow! Look at this kid's going rough at you, man. Got me. They got me. Listen, I'm going to give him my hand. <laughs> We're going to get Dan to teach you some lessons, MMA, and some fighting techniques. Just, <laughs> just in case he tries to wrestle with you, you can take him down. <laughs> He's got a bad hip. Yeah. We train. Oh, yeah. oh, there oh, you he, go. He trained? Yeah. yeah. Right. Right. Uh, Muay Thai, Muay Thai, and MMA. Oh, I do jiu jitsu shit. and. Uh, All right, so. We got a crowd here. So if you change your mind on cooking, you can stay on this side of me, and I have two bodyguards. Yeah, yeah. that's right. Yeah, yeah. there yeah. you go. Right. Yeah. I can watch you in your uh, boxing match without John Jr. Oh, there you go. John Jr. John Jr. will never fight this guy. Who yeah, are you? yeah. John Jr. is never going to fight this. No, nah, he turned me down. Oh, they they, they sure all got off the table about a year ago. He wouldn't do it, and the guys moved on, and they picked a couple of other guys to do it. But you know, I it, think he just likes you so much that he didn't want to fight you. I think is that why he's so here. obsessed with you? Know, you know, John, that's a that's a good that's a good point. Maybe that's he's why John Jr. is so obsessed with you. He's well, a fan. Maybe he's got a little. He's a fan. Maybe he's a little more than a fan. Listen, we know that. That's maybe, all right. Yeah, maybe maybe um, he's not my type though. Well, I come tell on, you guys. Right? Listen, before I shared a bunk with you, you shared a bunk yeah. with you yeah. shared a bunk with him. Uh, uh, we're not come here. We're not come here on to, now. You know that. Uh, but we we're not here to judge him. A couple times. I mean, you were tight when you were younger, right? You know, listen. When you grow up together, yeah, yeah. I mean, we were together a lot. Whether it wasn't really my choice, but you know, it was his father's choice at the time. But. 
you know, we we spent a lot of time together, and you know, that's life. Listen, you move on, and you 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 know, you move on. That's it. I didn't move on. My ex wife. Moved on. She got remarried. He just hasn't moved on yet. He'll get home. <laughs> we don't judge anybody's lifestyle here. We are very accepting of that lifestyle. However, John's just not interested. I got my book about him right there. Got his rules. It's yeah. up on my shelf. Yeah, I know, great. Yeah, yeah. I, I have a great writer. Awesome. Great yeah, writer. yeah. George great Anastasia's writer. a great guy. You know that. Yeah, he's from yeah, Philly. You know. I thought you wrote there. that. I wrote some of it. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> the forward? A lot of research. The forward? He does a lot of good work. Yeah, he does a lot of good work. So any, when you got him on, I was like, wow. Yeah, for the people good. that don't know, you guys in South Jersey, guys live near me, and, uh, you know, some of the people I know that are chefs. And So what are you looking to do in, in your in your future? Do you know yet? Do you nah, look at open your own restaurant? You want to work for somebody? You don't know. Nah, you know, I think I'm going to uh, start a criminal enterprise with him and get caught in the first place. <laughs> <laughs> and then go to prison and come out and start a new life. Yeah, then, uh, but if you go to prison, not that we hope that for your career, cook. you can cook for everybody yeah, there. Yeah, You'll be I was going to say, kitchen. he would have the commissary locked in. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, you yeah, 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 yeah. And as far as I'm concerned, isn't that, the, isn't that the, like, where you want to be? Like, yeah, oh, yeah, oh, safe. Oh, yeah. It's the safest place in America. Yeah. Federal yeah. prison. Yeah, but you could write a new cookbook. It's called Prison Cooking. Yeah. Oh. Okay. Hey, not for nothing, that would be a good gig. Yeah. How to cook on a hot plate, you know, how to cook. Well, they have a book out by that already. Just What's, oh, they do? Yeah. yeah. You read it? I watched for you, though. No, but yeah. I saw it. All right, so I was watching your uh, thing. It was with, with Vlad. It was like an hour, right? Right. Hour 45. I didn't I didn't get to this part yet. What did John uh, Jr. do to you? Why, why do you hate him so much? I... <laughs> like, I, I didn't get to that part yet. Well, the reason why I hate him so much is because he became an informant. John, you don't hate anybody. Let's be let's be honest. I really don't hate him. No, you actually, don't, he's you a don't pain hate in anybody. the ass. He's, he's, pain, he's like a gnat. You know, John doesn't hate they anybody. They won't go away. To be honest so, with you. Yeah, an annoyance. I mean, it's a day and night. We just did a show on this. He's a day and night annoyance. He doesn't do the right thing to help kids your age. So, you know, I try to do the right thing. I help kids, people that know me, like Danny, or different people that know what I've been doing the last decade. He's a guy that was an informant that try to change that tune. So while I was in prison and I was, I was doing time in Brazil, he was an informant. He worked for the, for the government and he was giving information against me and other guys. So you're out here like running around in like the slums of Brazil and he's like testifying against you. Exactly. He was eating your steak dinners yeah. at that time. <laughs> and you were like in like a jungle. Yeah. <laughs> but there's, there's the difference. So John, yes, he, he did what he did, but he's going to bring somebody on like you to elevate you, to, to bring light to your story. Versus you have John Jr. and you have like Sammy Gravano who are glorifying the lifestyle. Yeah, and and John, John's very clear that the lifestyle, there's nothing glorious about it. I lock those guys up all the time. And there's nothing glorious about that lifestyle, especially when they're going away to prison, leaving their families, losing all their money, losing their children, losing their wife. So that, that's, that's the message John gets out right now. So you got to remember that. Although those guys looks cool and everything. You listen to Sammy's podcast, you, listen, you know, or whatever. It's, it, half it's bullshit and the other half is glorifying the lifestyle. So when I look at you and you come on the show with your dad, it's this is what young guys should be doing, having fun with their life, enjoying doing, doing something positive. You have a good father. He, he obviously cares about you when we talk. And this is the good things. I would never push you in that direction in life because what you have in that life is lies and treachery, no friendship and no future. So when you have guys like that, that are guys trying to glorify, but meanwhile, they're informants, so they don't they hide that stuff from from kids like you guys. So you just follow into that life. Oh, I see. And, it's and, like, uh, oh yeah, that's a, that's a great idea. But I rather get out of it. You're gonna go do the forty years. Yeah, that's everything I, I feel like. Oh, what's it called? So, from my understanding, so when you when you're Italian, you take the oath. You can't leave. You know, they kill you, whatever. But you're Albanian, so couldn't you just like, all right, you know, I got like ten mil, guys. Hey, this, you know what's really interesting? <laughs> he switched his interview around. Yeah, he's Did so, you know that? Yeah, this was supposed yeah, to be interviewing you interview. about cooking. But he, just so you know, yeah. First off, he was half Jewish, John. Oh, for real? So, yeah. Mom, right? Such a deal. Yeah, his mom. Such a deal. Go ahead. And <laughs> so they, some things were changed a little bit so he could get made in a, in a mall. But, yeah, I am Albanian. And the rules that they live by are not the, the rules that they're supposed to live by, they don't live by. And that's yeah. the point. Against what I tell, tell kids, listen, if you find a positive story at the end of one of those roads that these guys are living that life, you won't find one. Everybody goes to prison, everybody dies, and each of these guys keep ratting on other guys. There is no loyalty, there is no friendship, it's just treachery and lies and uh, a life of uh, heartache and pain for everybody involved. So if I had to push you in a direction, I'll tell you to become the chef that you're trying to become. You're successful right now. You're obviously at your age on a television show. You're on our podcast. 
And if that doesn't work out for you, you find something else that's positive. You be a comedian. But don't go in a it negative light. You can be a comedian. Actually, guy. you can be a comedian yeah. or you can be an interviewer because you switch this around on yeah, us. Yeah, yeah. We want to hear about you and your future and what you're doing and your goals. So, Dad, let me ask you, Dad, if you don't mind, Fred. Yes. Your son has become a... Become a celebrity, right? Yeah, certainly. I mean, so, so so what does that do for you in your life? Is it is it is it a little is it is it um does it has it helped you? I mean, does it make your life better, worse? I mean, what's it like? Well, as far as uh, me, like you know, I'm well known in the city anyway because I'm in the restaurant business. So uh, as far and as what like city chef, is that? Philadelphia. Okay, in, in the city so, of Philly. Yeah, so yeah, we have a restaurant supply called Frederick and Son Life and Slicer Company, which I go to restaurants. I rent them cutlery and okay. then slicers, cutting boards, linen, you name it, we do it. And through that, that was one of the reasons why Freddie ended up getting on the show. Right. So when he was younger, uh, my one son would be at the bar getting the Shirley Temple, Dylan, and then Freddie would be in the back because he likes food so much talking to the chefs. Okay. So he would pick their brains, and then when we got home, he would make whatever whatever it was that, you know, that came across. Right. So uh, he, he got really good at it, and he used to go to this after-school care called uh, Portside. And they called up, Mr. Chef called up, and was like, do you have anybody in your area, you know what I mean, that cooks? And she was like, matter of fact, I do. His name is Freddie. So that year, we we went there, and this was 218. Well, Freddie didn't take it that serious. He just thought he was going to go on there, blow the, you know everybody away, and right. then get on the show. Well, right. that didn't happen. Okay. He uh, didn't even get a call back the first time. So then he took it real serious, and he was like, Dad, I'm going to take this serious. You know, he said a couple, you know, choice words. Okay. And, he, and he did. He took it serious for, for six months. He bought cookbooks, studied hard. Then the six months in, we... Uh, we started like really getting hammered. So I would bring him to a restaurant, drop him off, pick him up after he was done. So he was cooking people's meals wow. at 12 years old and people didn't even know. Wow. He was cool. in the back cooking. Cool. So uh, then six weeks in, like a fight camp, I brought him to Chef Beth Esposito, which was our mentor to him. And literally, like he said, we literally, I dropped him off at, right after school and picked him up at nine o'clock. He's, tra he's trained. He's trained. I mean, that's so well, that, he's that hard work. Ready. That got yeah. him ready yeah. for what he was going to see because on the show is high pressure. Oh, sure. I mean, it's high pressure. You sure. got, you know, 30 minutes to cook something yeah. uh, that you're not familiar with. You got Gordon Ramsay looking at you. Uh, and, Does uh, Gordon Ramsay yell at them at all? Is he like... Yes. Oh, yeah. All absolutely. Right. Dan, go to the next absolutely. show. With him. Yeah, I'm going to go with you. But, <laughs> what I'll say, but, but the one thing I'll say is this. Is like, uh, with the kids, he's definitely uh, softer. Uh, because when like when he came in and he was spoken to the uh, parents the one time, he goes, you know, these are kids. Their, their knowledge is just growing. Right. Where you're dealing with, you know, a, a grown-up, then they should know something when they come to see him. Right. So uh, he was definitely more lenient, but, I mean, he's stern as well. Like, you know, there was a, definitely a couple of times where, you know, I was just like, wow. I was like, he's really getting on him. And then you would see a kid break down. Uh, the one thing I thought that Freddie did well was, you know, he kept his composure the whole time. And Gordon Ramsay liked him for it. So any single time he needed some kind of scream at somebody, he, he, Freddie was the dude. He went right to him. <laughs> yeah, but you know what? Gordon, Gordon Ramsay is, is a good coach. It's like in tremendous. any other sport tremendous. or anything tremendous. else. Tremendous. He's tremendous at what he does. He's successful. Top of the and line. He's got a, and he's got a, a coaching method that works. So you got to say to yourself, this guy is you know top of the line, obviously. Uh, and when you find somebody that's successful, you follow him. So whatever he's doing, he's doing right. And whatever oh, he, Freddie's doing, he's doing right. And whatever he's taught him, and you taught him as an individual, he's uh, you, you're doing the right thing. Well, you get accolades for for having a really fine fine kid. I know he's a, he breaks my balls already. But well, that's what we do. But it's Philly. But that's what. Yeah, you, yeah, yeah, well, yeah. What yeah. Wait, wait, you're, Philly, what, you're Philly fans. We're from Philly. Yeah. <laughs> Thank God. We're from, I grew up in Atlantic City. That's why. So yeah. I'm a Philly fan through, through and through, and I'm a pilgrim in an unholy land up here with all these. New I know. York I saw fans. Yankees. And where I come from, yeah, I'm a Yankees We're, hater. So oh, yeah, uh, yeah, Lee. Yeah. Wait, wait. I gotta oh, tell Lee Rose. Oh, Lee, Lee was on the show. Lee. Yeah. Yeah. What he said. You went against the Giants. Well, Lee, well, Lee, Lee tell, so when I told Lee that, so Lee Rusan, he used to play for the Giants in the 80s. He's a very good friend of mine. And so he, when I told him that, and he goes, yeah, well, most of my, uh, most of my yards were against Philly. My first touch went against Philly, just to break my chops. So go ahead. He, he, and I told him, he's, Lee, you still owe me 30000 You killed me in the Super Bowl. <laughs> <laughs> like it was, he reeled it off. He's like, I know. Yeah, you, you cost me all that money in the Super Bowl. But oh, he played. I, I was going to say, you would know. So yeah, I tell my kids at Yankees steal game. Christmas presents. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah yes, yeah. I do. Yes, yeah. I do. But and, and um, what I say is where I come from, if no one's fucking, no, if no one's fucking with you, they don't like you. All right? <laughs> Remember that. Hold on. This is well, a PG. I say you're the uh, fan. No one's. I this said is the haters a, your biggest fan. That's right. This yeah. is a PG show. Let me get your hand. Oh. 
<laughs> Come on, my my Catholic, my Catholic. Uh, but again, we are from Philly, so don't worry about it. Don't worry, it. Don't worry about it. <laughs> but that, that's the, one of the things that shows with how much work you had to put in in order to be successful on this show. You could love cooking all day long, but you're just gonna you're not just gonna step onto one of these shows and do well. You got you got to put in the work. Absolutely not. How did it feel being 12 years old having to go? basically do a like that, that, job. That, that's a drive that's a yeah, drive that's man a great thing man, i want a hundred thousand i want a hundred thousand so you know that's what that's what you guys do. Nice. but you got a little personality that'll go with chef yeah. so which is a big thing and that's going to help you in, in your future well i mean if you think of it there was twenty five thousand kids that applied only 16 made the show so you, well, I mean, see you had to separate you know what i mean and freddie was separating every at every turn every category huh? so, yeah so i mean you know whether it was on film uh, culinary skills, knife skills, which is you know, which is also plays in a big thing. Uh, I had knife skills before, but I, didn't know. <laughs> I, I, I heard. I, I thought you had bat skills. <laughs> I got a couple Being a ball of skills. Yeah. Well, if he had real bat skills, he'd still be playing ball. Well, see, we wouldn't be doing bat. a show. You see we the difference be between, show. <laughs> between the John Lee bat versus the Michael Dowd bat? Yeah, but I got that at five. Okay. <laughs> Look at that. I was like, How many ounces is that? Twenty-two. No, this is a thirty-two <laughs> ounce. Yeah. I used to. I uh, well. 34 Somebody ounce. Money I, used more? A, I used to use a 32 and this one is just a two ounce it's all we need to control <laughs> <It's a two laughs> ounce. Michael a Dell, my dad got... was a michael dell bat i'll sign it for you my, no, you're gonna sign my bat now oh, yeah because this is the one i hit you oh with. okay so you get yeah. to sign it and I, hit me I, with yeah, it that's yeah, not fair you know what john this is both that, that, you just brought up a good good idea so uh -oh. i want everybody on this episode to send in all your comments and we're going to all get together, and we're going to pick the best comment, and we will have Michael Dowd sign this, and we will we will give it away, and we'll send it to you. What do you think about that? This I will think be. The we should auction it if he signs it. <laughs> 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 NFT. Let's yeah, yeah, make yeah. it an NFT. So we got to auction it, or we're <laughs> ah, going like to the best yeah, comment. Yeah. <laughs> I think I, I think we should auction it. I want to bring the. I want to bring the. Well, maybe we'll pay for the rent. I want to bring the rent the, for the I, I day. I want to bring the thunder. What was that guy's <laughs> name that played with the Rock? When he said this is, uh, yeah. and he does with his foot. He can smell. Yeah. La, 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 la. Uh, yeah. 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 <laughs> so I think, I think that would be a fantastic, maybe, maybe we could do a fundraiser for something. Well, yeah. uh, this month The is, gas bill has been high. This, <laughs> this, 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 <laughs> this month is for the kids' autism, and it's also for abused children. So people out there say we're all joking and everything, all right, but yeah. I, I put uh, some yeah. videos out about it. Don't forget, uh, kids are our future. He's our future. And, you know, we're going to joke around a little bit, but on a serious note, uh, you, you know, really, guys like you, you, there's a lot of kids watching you, parents who are watching you, and by your personality and your drive to be successful means a lot to kids that are watching you. And lastly, well, not last question, but lastly, if I finish this sentence, what is your favorite dessert that you make? Yeah, look, man, I'm not really a big uh, baker. But honest. we're big cake. Well, throw it out there. <laughs> Just throw it out there. My favorite dessert, probably uh, tiramisu. Okay. All right, that's good. That's good enough. Cannoli. That's safe. It's really good. Uh, cannoli, we don't eat anymore after the Godfather. No, you don't smoke. <laughs> we, we, yeah. You don't smoke cigars, but we have the. What do we have the there? The Bell Belladama cigars, uh -huh, right. and if you go to. So you shouldn't smoke, but you know, so if you, if go you go did. Bell Belladama cigars. Don't. Dot com, and you put in the code Elite Ten, you get a special discount. We saw those work. What's that? We don't know. I keep smoking them all. That's why I say <laughs> we can't hey, say. Well, that. Every <laughs> show, I, I smoke. There's there's an entre entrepreneurial woman. Her name's Chantel Levitt. She lives down in Florida. She's the she's one of two female cigar owners in the country, and she is the owner of Belladama Cigars. She's a very personal friend of ours, and so she was kind enough to put this code up for John to send out these cigars and they're they're they really are great cigars. I know you're I know you're just a kid. Yeah, yeah, I know. Cigars, but uh, you don't need to. No. Yeah, you don't want you don't yeah. want to start. Don't, don't start selling them at school. I'll get in yeah. trouble. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so that 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 going into the future, you you're gonna need because the show's gonna end. You're gonna need to take this exposure that you're getting right now. Do you have any plans on how you're gonna move forward with this exposure? Mm -hmm. Put out a line of cutlery. Put out a line of t-shirts. Something to keep your name out there because eventually you're gonna be an adult. and You're gonna want to get a job, and it's all about how people know your name. Yeah, that's a good point. Um. Right now we have an Instagram page. Uh, what is that? Uh, it's called. It's just Philly Freddy. Philly Freddy. Yeah. With a okay. Guy. So at oh, Philly like Freddy. That. Yeah. Um. True. Uh, the Mike Dowd, real yeah. Kevin Donaldson, true John Elite. And he just Dan stays. Security guard. Yeah, Dan. Dan. Security. 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 Sure that this guy stays alive. Security. Yeah. <laughs> Someone doesn't like, oh, come sucker punch him. Or John, well, it John got, it got yeah. out yeah. while we filmed. Yeah. yeah. John Junior doesn't come get you. 
No, I, I don't think that's going to happen. You got to. Well, I shouldn't. I got to. You, you bait me into to making fun of John Jr. I didn't he, say anything. Well, you he bait me into it. it. It's I your fault. No, not you. Oh. Him. So you pointed like this. You like, you like I, Bill Clinton. I pointed at He's him. Like Bill Clinton. Like, over here. <laughs> what the fuck? <laughs> you bait me. You bait me into saying stuff about Sammy. These these were dangerous no, guys at one you, point. They're not dangerous. Sammy's <laughs> like 100 years old. No, listen, he wasn't dangerous when he was 40 years old. Then why do we got about bodyguard because here Because they for? believe that they tell their own nonsense stories and no one checks them. You got to check the back of their baseball cards. <laughs> See if they got stats. the stats. They got no stats. <laughs> <laughs> They're full of shit. But if you ask specific questions, you'll find out they have no stats. They're frauds. So the next guy that sucker punches me, if I'm not... I'll a bridge this high, you know, I'll try to dive that way now. <laughs> Set it out way. Yeah. You know, I love the way these guys tell a story and they, you know, they change around facts. But it's not important. The important thing is uh, what you're doing. And we're going to get back to the interview of you. Me, my right. interview goes every week. <laughs> <laughs> well, have you gotten, have you gotten any, uh, any praise or some heat from your classmates in school? No, nah, everyone thought it was cool. No, yeah. I was on the show, yeah. Any girls coming at your way? Because, hey, look, they're, you're a celebrity. That ups your value. Hopes yeah. your dad's value too. Yeah. Man. That's what I was asking me for. What happened to dad? And then he went to something else. <laughs> <laughs> they ride it. Well, so, I'm good. Uh, right. so, so the girl, the girls, they, they coming at you because you're this big celebrity now. Uh yeah, I, I never got a lot of attention for it. Like being on show. Uh, you you guys see my uh, good uh, the Philadelphia one? No. No, nah, my business intro class was dying when they saw that. When was that one out? That was like a month ago. Really? Yeah, yeah three weeks ago. Yeah, three weeks oh, ago. So, so just... far, Freddie has done uh, Good Day Philadelphia, The Food Network, WXPN Radio. The Daily News did a, a nice piece on him uh, last week. Poor Richmond gave him the Star of the Year award. It was the 175th birthday. So they gave him more that day, nice. and then this podcast. Nice. Yeah. Wow. Nice. And I did the Today and, and a, Show. In a short period of time. I yeah. just did the Today Show, and I did it for the wrong reasons. You did it for the good reasons. I did 2020, uh -huh. just my voice, and mm -hmm. I did it again for the wrong reasons, mm -hmm. not for the right reasons. So I think you're winning this war. But you have a you have a, a responsibility now. So you now have a voice, whether you like it or not, yeah. because of your exposure, you have a voice. And you, like John has a John has a voice because of something that he did wrong. But he's using it to, to put out a good message. So for you, do you have a message that you want to put out further because you have that exposure and that voice for it right now? I haven't really uh, thought of a message. Here's a message. Tell all the kids you better not cook or we're coming after you. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Don't get to be a competition. <laughs> you see any scratch from this thing? Uh, I, I'm really, I'm really, I'm really, I really admire what he did at such a young age. Okay, oh, yeah. because you know I was a driven young man, and I, I drove it in the wrong directions. You know, as I as I got as I got closer to my profession, I I drove it, I drove it in the wrong ways. But this this guy's making fun of me right now. Okay. But but the reality is, at 12, 13 years old, if you're that driven about to do something, to be successful at something, you know, you could throw numbers at anybody in the uh, all day long, but. For a young guy, and I mean a young, young guy, to be able to follow through with that commitment, that, that's admirable. And, and so that says a lot about his character. And uh, I'm not his dad, but I would be really extremely proud if he were my son. I've, I have two wonderful sons, by the way, that I'm very proud of. By the, and I have four grandchildren, and I don't know who else I'm, I'm not counting, but uh, you know, I, know who I, I know who I account for you know, at this moment. And, uh, that's but that's really admirable to see this. And, and what I like to see is, is for, we were discussing it a, minute, a moment ago, was... I'd like to see for him take his platform and make it really to something valuable. And one of the things that happened to me, just so you know, we joke around a lot in here, but I was exposed very often and very frequently at a, for, for a microcosm, and I never capitalized on it the way I should have because I wasn't ready to do it. I, I knew it was coming, and John, you can, better, you can understand what I'm saying. I got hit so hard when they did the 75, and the 75 documentary, by the way, it was an excellent, actually done move, documentary slash movie. I wasn't in the position to capitalize on it. And of course, people go, fuck, you're a no good rogue motherfucker. Go fuck. Well, all the nonsense. Okay? Cursing. I'm, so, I'm sorry. <laughs> you're a no good rogue SOB and all that other stuff. But the bottom line is, if I was able to capitalize on that moment, if I was in position, I wouldn't even be, I, I, I'd be rocking and rolling. I, I had I had something, I'm just telling you straight up so you know. And John, you, I've told you. I had $5 million contract offered to me right after I signed my first contract. Within two weeks after I signed my first contract. Okay? I've been broke since the day I signed my first contract. 
And oh, that's a fact. I knew you were going to slip in the broke bug. Oh, you don't want to pay. I you don't want to pay for dinner. I treated. I caught this that. Afternoon. He's trying to get out of yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Working on it now. Anybody that's out there, listen. Come we on, just my talking. shoulder hurts. You know, I've been talking. We just talking about that. I've been talking about my See, shoulder. See, we trying to get away. My shoulder hurts from reaching long. <laughs> In my pocket. <laughs> this is like jail. When you get off that seat, he's going to check your pockets. <laughs> so Danny's waiting. Yeah. He wants to eat. So I'm assuming you didn't save or invest any of this money you made uh, when you were parking your Corvette. No, I did. I had four homes and a condominium on the ocean, and I had some cash. Hold but... on a second. Huh. How come I don't buy all these homes? I only bought two of them I stay at. Where's the other two? First of all, you had a $10 million mansion, okay? I didn't. Yeah, but I'm talking about now. No, I don't have them now. I had oh, I was saying, homes, where's the other car? Oh, right. I just want to know, because I, I was at two of them, I said. That you so adroitly told me I was an idiot for parking it there. <laughs> I didn't even buy it. <laughs> I, I, I paid cash for it. Of course yeah. I bought it. Yeah. You're making 50000 year. Let me pay cash for a Corvette. 50? I was making 28. 20, yeah. The bet, the bet was Freddy, 30. keep questioning him. This is going in the right direction. <laughs> uh, I wonder what you were thinking when you bought that. I had three homes. <laughs> three homes at 28000 oh, year. Get, you right, rent so, their fast. You had to get their fast. I'll explain it, Freddie. I'll I was Trump Jr. You will. Tr you are trying to rationalize an yeah, irrational don't do behavior. Uh, it is going to be a impossibility. Where Mike not is this, not in this setting. Yeah, where yeah. where where Mike was. He's not thinking clearly what he was doing. He's not even close, remotely thinking clearly. Else, he wouldn't have done what he did. I was clear as a bell. I like this guy smart. <laughs> I was clear as a bell. <laughs> and then you gotta like put that under your mattress or something. But think about think it. about how fleeting his his time in that life was. And Mike has told me this. He, do, he doesn't talk because you see Mike as this big, jo as this jovial guy likes to joke around. He's not telling you about the anxiety that he went through. John's not telling you about the PTS when he's got the nightmares about the lives that they led. Yeah, no. You know, and listen, I there's there's things that happen to me that don't let me don't don't allow me to sleep very good. But I guarantee my my night sleep is better than them. I were I, listen. I'm, I'm not a rich guy. I'm a, I'm I'm an average guy. But so that's the price. There's a price to everything. There's going to be a price to your fame too. You got to figure out how you're going to use that. Like, what's going to happen if you win that hundred thousand dollars? What are you going to do with it? These are all things that have to run through your mind, and it, it comes with age. You're 15 years old. We don't expect you, but Fred, your father, we expect him to think about it. Have you put any thought into that stuff? Have I? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, yeah absolutely. I mean, the whole thing is to generate, you know, uh, sustaining wealth. Mm -hmm. uh, like, you know, because I, I listen to your podcast, I listen to you. It's like, you know, all the money that you came across. You know, and now where where did that go? Yeah. You know, yeah. I mean, all yeah. that money that you were shaking down people yeah. nonstop, all the, yeah. you know, illegal drugs that you were selling and all the numerous hundreds and tens of thousands you made, where did it all go? Yeah. We better stop. Lawyers. We better stop this conversation. <laughs> I'm going to have to call better help. <laughs> 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 but, just to, but just to think, like, you know what I mean? Like, all the life that you led and how yeah, adventurous it was and the money and the planes and all that Listen, stuff. Listen, when you go down this road, Right from the beginning, when we talk serious, when you get down to the middle and towards the end of the road, there is no road left when you live the life we're living. It's a bad road. And so any idiot that tells any kid to follow our old path is an idiot, an imbecile, because it's not going to end well. It's going to end in a bad way. So what you're doing, what you saw, and I, I don't know how many other kids you got. I know you have a couple, sure, right? Two others. Yeah. Uh, Dylan, right? Yes. Uh, so... You know, as as a, as a father, you can only point them in the right road and hope they follow it and, you know, try to push them. It, you know, he's not only a chef, but you're, you're personable and you learned a good quality and you joked and said it's a Philadelphia thing. It is, but it's a person thing. So you're learning that from your dad and maybe your grandma and some other good people around your life. And this is the important aspect of what you're doing, like Kevin said. Where's your road going to end? And you got to think about that. Cooking is, is, as a chef, is one career and if that doesn't work out, which is secondary and third, and you're still young, you don't have to decide that now. Later in life, you will, but your dad's thinking about that now. But that's what you keep your, your parents around. Now, it's better than what my 12-year-old son does. He just changed my name on Netflix to Douchebagalo. <laughs> <laughs> well, so. sorry, we paid him to do that. <laughs> <laughs> that's what I get. But, you know, we all, as parents, and Fred, you're going to attest to this, we all, as parents, try to do the best that we can. I mean, that's all you can do. Right. You know, nobody's yeah. perfect. So. Right. right. We're going to make mistakes. We're going to make hiccups. And your father's going to make mistakes. He he's doing the best that he can. Where you are, you got to appreciate that, and and you got to look to your father. And it seems like you guys have a really good relationship. Yeah, yeah, really yeah. does. I mean, they, he, we've been together since like he was five all the time. So I mean, I took them to work with me all the time. So yeah. you know, you know what's really good is they train together too, right? Yeah, you, yeah. You, yeah. So that's really cool. And and, and sure, I'm they know they know this, but I'm going to say it for effect. You get knocked down seven times as long as you get up eight. 
That's right. right. As long as you get up eight, you, you got a chance. Well, well I'm the, trying to. Yeah, I'm having trouble getting up since my hip. <laughs> <laughs> there is nothing. Eight in, the in the morning. I didn't say eight. eight I didn't say eight. Eight in the morning. Well, I keep getting knocked down. There is Everybody no- keeps sucker punching. That's why Dan's <laughs> yeah, around. Yeah, <laughs> there is nothing in the world. He wants to ask something. Yeah. He wants to ask something. So, all right. So oh, he's just gonna break your balls. Again. I know. No, yeah. no, 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 I'm being serious. No, no. So, all right. So when he went to jail, at least he was like a respected guy in there. Mm-hmm. You were a cop. Right. <laughs> How was that? Wow. He met a really good guy. He got I, 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 call I, I quickly got a girlfriend. You're like, call <laughs> tell, him about bu- tell him about Bubba. No, I'm mean, serious. There, there was a Bubba story. Was a Bubba. Yeah. So they put you in like protective custody? Oh, so so, so, so uh, I started out in protective custody mm-hmm. for the first nine months of my bid, which was in, in MCC New York. And then after a while, I realized there were all a bunch of fucking rats in here. So <laughs> what are they going to do, break an egg on me? And if they are, I mean, I was no, I was built like your dad, maybe even a little bit. I was, I was pretty. No, you were in good shape. I was really, you really were. I good was shape. jacked, you know. And uh, so it wasn't going to be a one way trip for everybody. It would have been a two way situation. And uh, so that was helpful, by the way. That doesn't mean anything because the littlest guy in there could hurt you real bad with a soap and a sock. I mean, yeah. you, you may have no chance if he gets you at the right time. But, you know, I for me, I carried myself properly. I didn't get in anybody's business. I didn't tell on anybody. I did my own thing. I stayed to myself. Uh, I, I worked out. Shit, why don't you follow that now? <laughs> Mike, I found out that you, in, in, in order to in order to, to earn a living, you have to engage with other motherfucking other people. Okay, <laughs> Mike, so, I want to let that's you, the problem. I want to let you know, Mike. I love you. I love you. You're one of my very dear friends because you are taking it rough today. And I just want to let you, you know that there are, you need there a are hug. some. I don't need better, a hug. I don't need a hug. I give you a hug. He needs better help. I need better help. Yeah, I need do. a phone call. Yeah, you need a phone call. <laughs> but so so yeah so so it, it was no dance and and it, and for me personally. It was dangerous every day, mm-hmm. mentally dangerous. And, and I had to look every person in the prison and see where the next potential problem could come from. And there's 1,800 men in that prison. And no one really liked me. There was about four or five guys that, and John would attest to that because he, he, he had a couple of friends that were cops in the joint. Yeah. yeah. They have, listen, most people go back to bullies and weak. Guys are intimidated. The same guys that want to be his friend when he was on the street, when he goes inside, they want to turn their back. That's right. just the life. Right. This is why the world, that life sucks. Right? It's no good because they're phonies. And the, the people are weak. So in groups, they're tough. Right. And they don't want to be, stand alone and take his back because they don't want to stand alone. It's easier when there's a whole group. You know, so you learn as, as, a, as a, a strong person, I'm not talking physically, that you don't care about groups. You don't need a group to okay yourself. You're going to okay yourself only if you say it's okay. It. And if your dad approves of the way you're living. Everybody else you don't need approvals from. And that's only for weak people that need group approval. And you went to Brazilian prison. Yeah. I've seen like documentaries. Yo, that's rough. Yeah, Brazil's uh, yeah, not a good place. So I already have to like pay for like clean water and all that. You don't really get clean water. You get used to <laughs> drinking that, uh, that water that's, uh, you know, people get very sick from it because obviously it's... it's not it, clean. Yeah. No. And, you know, you, you get used to it after a while, of drinking it and sipping it around, and yeah, you get, uh, what do they call that? Dysentery. 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 Yeah, yeah. Well, you're Dysentery. looking for ways to drop some weight. I'll say, uh-huh. Yeah, I should go back to <laughs> Brazil and go to jail. Yeah, one <laughs> week. <laughs> one week, you drop 40. Any, yeah, anything yeah. else, uh, like, in Brazilian prison? Like, I heard people that get, like, machetes in there. Yeah, yeah. Bro, they have sex. Well, you know. They have, it, they have real sex with real women in there, too. Yeah. Don't kid yourself. Yeah. yeah. So, so it may, it's, it's bad. Listen, it's bad as hell, but if you get that one point, you're, <laughs> so yeah, this it's a different it's, it's a different prison. Are these like co-head prisons or something? Like, what do you mean? No, no, no. no. money buys everything. Visits. They bring ah. they bring them in. Money buys you everything. That was the thing that your story I thought was amazing that you were traveling so much, like yeah. you were hitting all countries. And I was funny the one thing you said you were like you know all these Italian gangsters never even been to Italy and and, and all those like yeah. relationships that you had and the passports and all the you know. Uh, the uh, exits that you did have, which I thought was amazing. And then the thing I thought was strange about your story was that at the end, you kind of wanted to get caught. Yeah. Like, you know what I mean? It was, was that done. stressful? And, I was and done. Just like, I'm just, whatever. So I tell the story. I'm driving down the, the, down the LIE. I'm headed to work, and, and, I, and I don't feel half my body. So I'm, I feel this whole left side of my body is frozen, and I'm, I'm driving 90 because I'm a cop going to work. I don't want to be late. And I'm ready to crash this side of the highway instead of this side so I didn't hurt. No. So I live my life, the last year of my life, ready to die. Why do you, I don't know, pack, put in your two weeks, pack your bags, I'll take your money and That's too, bounce. that's, that, because that's, because the addiction, addiction, uh, uh, the life that you, oh, if I could just make it one more day, R- R- but, it never ends. But running, I did that, right? Yeah. Leaving the country. 
And that's just as stressful. Oh. Because every day you're looking over your shoulder. And when people talk about your father just said with Italy and the guys here involved in the mob in the street, they never been to Italy once. They can't speak Italian. My my cousins, Albanians, the, the Italian Albanian relationship in, in overseas in Europe is a very close relationship. They're like family. So it's like family yeah. relationship. They they all speak Italian. They all speak different languages there. It's a different mentality in Europe than it is here in the States. So when guys make these dumb comments on social media, my kids are Italian. My my kid's mom's Italian. Uh, some of my cousins are half Italian also. So, you know, this is separation nonsense talk. You judge people by their character, not by their color, not by their religion, not by where they're from. So these are uh, guys that are, you know, trolls on, on social media that talk stupid, put up fake messages, cut tapes. and, and They always blame me for it. interrupting you and shit like yeah, that. I mean, exactly. what, what's wrong with them? Yeah, That's all editing. That's not, but then again, I think you hit it on the head. It's how, you know, each individual treat, because that's how my, my father taught me. That's right. You know, each individual is their own person. That's it. It doesn't have to be an ethnic group. It's not what you look like. It's how yeah. you treat me. I mean, you get treated. Well, people know I'm, you know, I'm a big advocate. Your against father's a smart guy. Against, yeah, bullying, against bullying, against bullying, I advocate obviously for the inner cities, places where we come from. Uh, color doesn't mean anything to me. We're friends with, uh, you know, I have different people, with different ethnic backgrounds and colors, and I, I don't care. I don't judge anybody. So, Look at the color you, know, you got. Was that from Florida or from California? Uh, California. I was at the pool with you. In it was at, at the pool. Where were we at time? We were in Anaheim. Then we were in. Uh, you know what's funny? Like you said, I do a lot of traveling. So does he, actually. So we were just all in Florida together, and we were all over Florida. We were from the West Coast to the East Coast to California to L.A. to Anaheim, red carpets. We travel. We live a good life. That was funny you said that. So you took a picture out front of the uh, the hotel that uh, a pretty woman was made. Right, right. Yeah, right. yeah, we, yeah, we, yeah. When we were out yeah. filming yeah. the show, we, yeah. that's where we got picked up by oh, our okay. tour guide. So yeah. we went to go get slides for my uh, son. Uh -huh. Gucci, okay. realizing that you know they basically you know Porsche named this, and they were like, yeah, they're like slides for a, a kid that's eight years old that are like two hundred and fifty dollars. Oh, yeah. So he that's was like, good. ah, don't worry. It was the day before we started filming. He's like, ah, we're gonna win anyway. Don't worry about this. Buy it. So, ah. we, so we end up buying it, and we're walking, and so we lost track of time. They're calling us like, yo, where are you at? That's exactly where they picked yeah. us up, right in front of that hotel. That's yeah. cool. That's yeah, cool. Nice yeah. Well, yeah. you know when I filmed Netflix, I actually filmed it in Camden. I, I filmed oh, at one you? of the gyms at Camden, yeah. So you know, it's my friend Denny Brown's gym and Prince Bob area. D. And it's, yeah, it's a, you know, I, I, well, we grew up there, so we know everybody there too, you know. So and again, it's the inner cities, and this is what I talk about on on a positive note. You know, they should be helping the, the inner cities a little more than they do. Instead of worrying about other countries and our border, they should be taking care of you know my friends and families and people that we know in these in these areas, especially in Philadelphia. Yeah. I mean, it's a war zone there now. I mean. It's totally it's changed. It's I took I took my kids there uh, two years ago in the summer because they had never been to Philly. Took them up to the, you know, you got to take them to the Philly Art Museum, see the Rocky statue and stuff. I couldn't believe how much it's changed since I was a kid because I used to spend a lot of time in Philly. And those inner cities, they're, they're really hurting. For, to put it into perspective, are you going to feed Mike's kids before your kids? No. That would be foolish. You're going to feed your kids first no matter how much you love Mike. And it's not that you hate Mike or love Mike. You take care of your own first, and then the extra goes to... I'm going to get a new tattoo. I was thinking about it. Can I say what about the tattoo? Can yeah, you show him that tattoo? Donald Trump, baby. That's the 45, and that tattoo represents Donald Trump, and it re represents America first. And I'm sorry for anybody else outside this country, but, you know, you got to worry about the kids in, in, in America first, our veterans in America first, our police in America first, single mothers in America first, so you, when they worry about that, you can send over four billion or trillion, whatever you want to send to Iran and these other countries. But how about what's going on in this country? Our kids that were, all, you know, are dying in this country. They they can't eat. They're sleeping in tents outside. So when we have a president that doesn't care about this country, and he's full of shit, and everybody's I don't know why anybody's hedging words. This guy's going over to other countries. Oh, oh, thirty eight percent. Yeah. What, Thirty-eight I, percent. I want to see. He where voted is the one? six times. One guy. I want to see the guy. Where's the thirty-eight percent? Hunter Biden. He probably we voted a hundred times for us. I have confidence. Yeah. In so this. we're all going to get that forty-five tattoo because it's going to make America great again. Thirty-eight percent of confidence in this guy. Yeah. Well, listen. That's not what that's Have you ever found people one? Have there. you ever found one? I'm just being honest. Have well, you ever found one? I know the kids from my neighborhood, and I know the people from inner cities. They can't go get gas anymore because they can't pay their rent. They can't pay their food bills. Everything's too high. And any country in, around the world isn't safe right now. But it was safe a year and a half and two years ago and three years and four years ago when 
45 was the president. So dislike anybody that says they didn't dislike, they cannot argue these things. And they cannot argue what's going on at that border. So there is no argument here. So if they try to argue, I want to see where they're arguing. Just give me that's, logic. That's all that's, I ask. It's just being logical is it when we worry about the future, your son and other kids, this is what we got to worry about. This is about taking care of our own country before we start taking care of other countries. So anyway, you're just you're just saying that because the president had you as a special guest. I was a guest there, and uh, you know, it's a I'm wonderful picture. Be... You go on at True John Elite, you'll be able to see the pictures. That's yeah. a good picture. That is a good picture. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, so uh, Joe Biden like, invited you to the White House. <laughs> Who's Joe Biden? Joe Biden? I don't know who Joe Biden is. Oh, Donald Trump invited you. Yeah, I don't even know who Joe Biden is because I don't recognize him. We say the we say yeah. the we say the president. Yeah, the president. It's to me is. President right. Forty Five Donald Trump, so uh, he's the one. That, he's the one that changed his country. Yeah, that's cool. Yo, it's a great picture. I met him once. Listen, they, they you know people would say what, what they want. The guy ran the country with there was there was no. We we're looking at the brink of war in every country. You have yeah. you have China walking into Taiwan. You have. Russia with Ukraine, whatever's going on there, there's none of our, it's not our conflict. Iran threatening the Saudis. And you have Iran threatening us, and yeah. we're talking about giving them atomic bombs. Yeah. You have North Korea testing missiles all over the place. So you have a lot of, a lot of different moving parts of wars, of possible wars that could break out. And we have this imbecile as a president that's uh, just sold this country out in every manner. Well, that's one of the concerns I do have because he is going to be 15. So, we, you know what I mean? If this continues, he's going to be right in that age yeah. group where... Yeah, you never, you don't know. Yeah, they sold our veterans. Well, he can cook. Thank God, he can cook. They'll say, make yeah, him a yeah, cook. Yeah, we can't forget make they, him a they left top eight, cook. Eight, eighteen billion dollars of equipment in in, in Afghanistan. Eighteen seventy five billion. Thirteen of our fallen soldiers there and Americans in those countries. There's no excuse for it, and not to say that we don't feel bad for kids and families in other countries. But after you take care of your own home, then you can take care of it there. But the same people don't believe in walls and fences have walls around the house in Delaware, have fences around the White House. They're putting another fence around there. So it's okay for them to be safe. They all have private bodyguards. But our families and the inner cities and anybody else, that, that they don't get the protection. They want to defund the police, but then they want to hire private security for themselves. So, you know, when people wake up and say and see what they're doing, people need to go back and go and vote the other way. Vote away from whatever's going on now. And that doesn't mean if they're Democrat and they vote America first, then, then vote for a Democrat who votes America first in their district. But if they're selling out your district, like Maxine Waters, do not vote her back in. About, she sold out the homeless. She sold out everyone. What about Tulsi Gabbard? She's Democrat. Yeah, she's, she's a good woman. Go, and she's woman. a good she's woman. She's got a lot of yeah, good things to good. say. And she's very attractive. Yeah. Yeah, yes. Yes, no, she She's is. good and on she, the eyes. Well, that's because she's from Hawaii, and I don't think anything's unattractive she's in Hawaii. She's good on the eyes. But see, you see this, Freddie? This, this is what we're trying to impress upon you. With your voice... You have the opportunity that most people don't have, and that's to enact change because more people are going to listen to you. It's a big responsibility for somebody at 15. Are you ready to take on that responsibility? Because that's where you you need to go. Like you have a you have there's there's something that people put are on. watching you. Got a gift. you. Plus, you can give us a job as soon as you get a yeah. little old. <laughs> listen, I'm just looking for one free meal, yeah. all right? <laughs> it seems like you got quite a bit of them along the way. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it co I, it co they cost me quite a bit. Too. There was no free. By the, free. by the way, there was no, no free. free there was no free lunches. I'll tell you that much. So, Freddie, tell us where. Tell us your Instagram one more time. It's uh, all lowercase uh, Philly Freddie. At Philly Freddie on Instagram. Is yeah, there anywhere Philly, else yeah, we Philly can find? Philly underscore uh, Freddie with a Y. And of course, don't forget to watch you on Gordon Ramsay's Junior Chef, mm -hmm. which is airing right now. Yeah. Wow. That's on Hulu. You can it's, watch. Like, oh, it's yeah, on Hulu. Yes. Mm -hmm. That's cool. That's pretty neat. And how about mm -hmm. Dad? Where, where can we uh, find you if somebody wants to get in touch with you, to get in touch with your son, or anybody wants to contact you? Uh, just for, you know, Instagram, Fred Taylor. Okay. Uh, Facebook, Fred Taylor, 411. All right. Cool. cool. Simple. Cool. Make sure you look for it at the Mike Dowd, at Real Kevin Donaldson, and of course, at True John Elite. You have an Instagram? I don't, but I have something to say. Free Kane. Free Cain Velasquez. Free Cain. Oh, Free yeah, well, Cain. That, that, Cain that's a whole show that yeah. we need to do. Yeah, we're going to do a show on that, Free actually. Cain, yeah. Brother. Free Cain. I don't want to live in a country where you can't kill a guy who raped your four-year-old son. Oh, yeah, yeah. Yeah. That's yeah. Crazy. yeah. yeah. That is crazy. Yeah. That, is, that is a major thing you just said. Free Cain. And, and people that, that want to write about that, uh, comment to us about Free Cain, uh, it's uh, every parent's nightmare, uh, God forbid. So please give your comments, write in. Uh, again, we'll answer them. If you have any interesting people that you want on the show for us, 
uh, call in, write in, and uh, go on the website, johnelite.com. Check out our books, uh, Bats. Uh, we're doing a special on the Bats. The 20th Bat is free this month. Um, photos and our schedules of shows we're doing, lectures, talks, uh, and uh, engagements. Don't Thanks, forget everybody. about raffling off the, uh, the, the Michael Dowd, Michael Dowd special and, edition spe- bat. Yeah, and give us the best comments you think we should write on this bat. We'll write it on. <laughs> I just want to thank Fred and his son, Freddie. W- wonderful father-son team. Really, um, that's cool. Thanks, thanks thank for coming. Yeah, it really, really is. It really awesome. is a cool yeah. thing, you guys. Appreciate it. We want you back. Yeah, don't absolutely. forget the John Elite limited edition sunglasses right by Private Eye. Right yeah, go I'm, I'm going to keep these. We'll make them look good. Go on johnelite.com and you can look for them. Absolutely. All right, guys. <laughs> <laughs> he just scammed us out of sunglasses. <laughs> good.